Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sarah C's Full Circle. I'm Sarah C. Today is Sunday, June 5th, 2022. Can't even believe already that we're six months into the year. Like, I don't even know where it went. It's kind of crazy. So I have lots of exciting things this week on this show. And the first thing is to announce that the show is going public. And I'm no longer going to be doing a private show. Uh, I wanted to share everything with you all publicly. So I have enjoyed working with my peeps on a private basis. And I can still continue to do that with you if you need it. You know me. Uh, but I wanted to share the things that I'm interested in and the things that I'm doing with the rest of you. I am not a um, guru of every single thing. You know, I'm, I'm not 100% knowledgeable in every single thing, like not everybody is. But what I'm gonna do is serve as sort of an outlet to you. This is gonna be a talk show, you know, on everything in my life, okay? From cards to, um, gifts, physical gifts, uh, to herbal medicine, holistic living, foraging, um, chakras, meditation, um, you name it. I'm going to be doing interviews with people in the area eventually, or wherever I travel, because you know I'm a, um, on the road occasionally here and there, state to state. So whoever I might run into, if it's somebody that's like-minded or something that I'm gonna be delving into, you know, I'm, I, I'm gonna be bringing things to you, things that'll interest you. And if they don't, keep scrolling. If you don't like me and my videos, keep scrolling. If you do, please like, share, follow, comment. I don't want any negativity on my channel. So if you don't have anything nice to say, Go down somewhere else, Sam. I'm pretty blunt. I tend to swear. I'm a witch. Um, I'm very eclectic. I was raised Catholic. I've practiced many different religions trying to find myself and where I belong. And where I belong is where I am. I have practiced Christianity, Catholicism, uh, Buddhism, all kinds of different things. I read tarot, I'm a medium. I see ghosts, I talk to ghosts. I have visions, I'm a Claire, I'm an empath. I don't know what you call me. Some people call me um, a hedge witch, a kitchen witch. I don't know what you call me. I'm a little bit of everything. I have a lot of gifts. Um, I'm able to shut myself off and not be able to reach out to the dead when it becomes very overwhelming for me. Um, total introvert, but I have had so many jobs working with the public that there's some irony in that. I'm a healer. I have been able to heal things, animals, people, you know, I guess people aren't a thing. Pets aren't a thing, animals, you know. Um, I have been able to talk to animals on occasion. I don't like seeing ghosts. There's a little fun fact about Sarah C. I don't like ghosts. Been seeing them since I was four. They still freak me out. There's lots of things. Today, um, this week, the topics that I have um, are going to be pretty fun. I am going to do a three card picket for the week. And uh, we're going to be talking about wand, chakras, which which are you. I am going to, on my, on my shows, I I'm going to suggest books and videos. I'm going to have fun things and fun facts, and I'm going to read you things. And, you know, you can also tell me suggestions of things you'd like to see. I've already had some people doing it for me. You know, oh, I'd like to do this. I'm going to have some guided meditation. Um, I also sell notebooks and journals on Amazon. Okay. Um, some are funny. I like to swear, I said. So some of my books have swears on them. They're reasonably priced. I do everything from meditation journals, dream journals, wedding gifts, books, 
um, drawing books for kids and you need it, I do it, prayer books. You know, I am not offended by anybody's religion. I'm gonna put that out there right now. Whatever you practice is your business. Um, I'm very spiritual and I am happy to share my things with you. I'm very holistic, very organic. I'm big on, on big pharma, like big against it, okay? And not to be a hypocrite, I'm taking medications from my doctor for my ailments, for arthritis and um, fibromyalgia and other things like that and migraines. But I'm working the hell out of myself to plant herbs and make tinctures and do things homeopathic and um, herbal medicine and stuff like that so that I could get myself off pharmaceuticals and do things all naturally. So I'm gonna be sharing things like that with you. I also make my homemade teas and I sell them. Um, I read tarot, I read oracles. I'm not gonna be sitting here trying to um, sell you $100, 30 minute readings. That's not my game. I'm not here to make money off of tarot readings. I'm here to help people with them. I do appreciate a donation, a tip, something for my time. You know, my cards never lie. They have never once lied in the 15 years I've been reading. So take it with how you want to take it. So I, um, I will put all links up to all the videos that I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm also going to talk about a book today. I'm going to read an entry from a book today. Uh, what else do I have? My ones. What I was doing privately with my peeps, we were doing some ones, so I'll touch upon that. Clover tea samples. Who wants one? Talk about that. Oh, uh, yeah. So I'll have a link up uh, with my Cash App and PayPal. So if you want to donate five bucks, a couple of bucks, whatever, for my time or whatever you feel like you want to donate to me for my time. Uh, I will also be putting things that I like that I think somebody might get something out of. I'll be putting other people's YouTube videos up on my channel to for self-help, okay? There's going to be lots of things, okay? It's going to be every week. I'm not sure what time the show will be every week, but it will be up every Sunday. So whether I pre-record during the week or not, I do a lot of traveling. I'm going to be uh, going to see my honey up uh, in the Jersey area this week, which is very exciting. And then I'm going to head up to New England and see my, my baby boy and some of my friends for a couple of days and then go back down. And uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, my husband uh, is deployed and he travels all around the country and everywhere. So... I see him when I can. It's my opportunity to go see him now. So, all right. So I'm very excited and I hope that you all join me. I have a uh, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for Full Circle Healing. Okay. I'll be putting more stuff, uh, stuff up on my Full Circle Healing Facebook page. Um, I guess I'll start with the teas. I am going to, I have been uh, foraging in my backyard, which is pretty cool. Uh, white clover. So I started doing that and uh, I made tea. I dried it myself, picked it, dried it, uh, clipped it, got it in here. I made a tea and everything. It was delicious. There's so many good properties in here. Um, it's also good for protection. Okay. Uh, abundance and lots of other things. It's so good for colds and stuff. So uh, this is what I got from my first batch. And actually, I probably used half, half of what was here um, for the first batch of tea that I made because I made a whole pot of it. But what I'm going to do for you guys, okay, is my lawn is uh, growing and I don't use any pesticides or anything like that. We cut and weed whack and do whatever else when we have weeds or I pull them, okay? I am going to harvest a whole new batch and dry them. And when they're ready, I'm going to make tea bags. So if anybody wants a sample of one tea bag, this is what you have to do. Listen, 
go to my Facebook page under Full Circle Healing. Peace, Tarot, and more. Okay. DM me, inbox me, however you want to call it. Insta message me privately. Okay. Put your name and your address. Let me know that you want a free sample of white clover tea. I will send you one tea bag that comes from my backyard, pesticide free, harvested, dried, put in tea bags, and mailed to you by me, Sarah C, for you to enjoy. And if you like it, maybe you'll like some of my other teas that I make on a regular basis that are very good for you. So that's for me to you. Um, I'm not going to be doing this forever. Okay, they're supply and demand, you know what I mean? I don't know how long clothes are going to keep uh, sprouting out of my yard, but you know, and I want some for myself too. But you no, know, if you're interested, I will send you a, a bag and um, maybe it's something I'll put on my supply list. But this is for a limited time, limited time offer. It smells delicious. It tastes delicious with a little bit of honey, no milk, a little bit of honey and raw sugar, raw brown sugar. That's what we, we do in my house. Okay. Uh, let's see. Wands. All right. For all my peeps, bear with me, who was, uh, who I've been doing privately. I put up some, uh, and I'll, I'll share them on my page and the links. So what I'm doing is I'm making a wand for my altar. I took your average stick, okay? And I started uh, cutting it down, you know, cutting all the bark off and whatnot from, uh, with my knife. It's your average yard stick or stick from the, um, a park or a forest or whatever, anyway. So I started doing that and I had some really cool videos that I posted for ideas. You can Google it guys. You know, if you're not into witchcraft or um, don't do altars, but you're spiritual and kind of leaning towards this kind of stuff and that's fine. Um, you can enjoy yourself and do it with your kids as a Harry Potter thing, okay? There's Dollar Tree ways to make these. You can put gems, you can, um, you could put um, hot glue around them. You can paint them. You can put wire on them. You could do nothing. You can engrave them if you have a, uh, what you want to call it? So, uh, it's wood burner kits, you know, anything you want to do. I just, uh, I put a couple of links and, uh, and I'll share them publicly too. Uh, links to, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, different YouTube videos for ideas. So my cutoff is at the end of June. <laughs> so I'm going to be traveling. This is going to be fun. So here is uh, here is uh, our duty. So if you guys want to, you got all month, okay, to make a wand, make them with your kids. Say, hey, you know, let's let's have a fun thing to do. Summer's coming. You know, everybody's going to be out of school. Do a fun Harry Potter wand. You know, take a take a weekend day or whatever, or a weekday or whatever, whatever works for you, mom and dad, or aunt and uncle, old sister, whatever, and do a Harry Potter marathon and mix wands. You know, so we got that. Um, which which are you? If you haven't checked out the video that is on uh, my YouTube channel, then you need to do that. Um, there's a video up there, and it this. This girl is pretty cool and she tells you like 20 different types of witches and everything. It's so badass. So you got to check it out. It says that I am a hedge witch. It makes total sense. So check it out. So I got that. Um, we did the wands yoga, yoga, breathing meditation. Okay, let's talk about this for a minute. I'm going to puff on my thing. Uh, I started doing yoga about 10 years ago. You wouldn't know it by looking at me, but this is, uh, this is a downside of getting like 60 pounds or so, whatever. 
when I was doing it, um, I was probably 130 pounds, better shape, all that. I did it for a while. I started out with vinyasa yoga, okay? It's a 21 minute video. The Czech sun rocks by a beach. It's, you can hear the ocean waves, it's so relaxing. It's very simple. For me, it's a way to start. Now, nine years later, um, I gained a lot of weight. I have fibromyalgia, I have arthritis, which I've always had arthritis. It's just way worse now because I gained a bunch of weight. Blah, 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 blah. You got it, okay? So I'm gonna put that up there. That's a great way to start yoga on your own if you're not paying to go to a class or a private instructor or something like that. You could do it in your living room. You could do it in your bedroom. Get a map, map, a mat. Cheap one, buy from Amazon, Walmart, whatever. Also, um, for people like me um, that have arthritis, fibro, joint issues, I have um, AI joint issues in my hips. I have problems with my hips. So it's hard for me to get around. I ache, I hurt, it just hurts. So exercise has been an issue. There's people out there that have had joint replacements, hip, knees, back, all, I don't know, back replacements, but surgeries, okay? So I know you're all in the same boat where they're telling you to get exercise, but it hurts to get exercise. So when you exercise, it hurts more and then you gotta stop. And that was the boat I was in. So try this, okay? Um, yoga for joint pain and arthritis and safe and accessible yoga for lower back pain, okay? Uh, this pretty much covers all the joints, it's very easy. You do kind of have to get down on the floor, but once you're down there, you stay there, use a chair. It's not crazy. I will post the links to those videos also on YouTube, okay? Don't expect to be able to do, you know, a downward dog, you know, the thing with your butt up in the air kind of thing and then walk yourself back up like you know you just per perfect gumby nobody is that um perfect unless you've been doing yoga for years i'm not flexible like that anymore so if you're gonna try it do what you can it's like any aerobic instructor instructor would tell you do what you can eventually you'll pick up and you'll start doing more and more and more it's the first steps if you feel silly about it which i did in the beginning do it by yourself or do it with somebody else who's going to feel just as silly as you. Okay. It's great for stretching. It's great for breathing, meditation, all combined in one. You need to do this. Okay. Yoga's key. Okay. I'm going to be, my husband's going to be doing this with me too. Yes, you are dear. <laughs> okay. So we got that. Okay, tea samples, we went over that. New cards, oh my gosh, I got new cards. I haven't got new cards in a couple of years, so pretty excited about this. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see these. These are, I got them off of Amazon, I love Amazon, kind of an Amazon whore. I know a lot of you are too. Hey, COVID hit, what did we do? We have everything shipped to us. We stopped going out as much. Amazon kept, kicked into full speed ahead and everybody started doing that. Walmart, everybody started ordering their groceries, okay? Alice in Wonderland Oracle cards. I love these. They're iridescent. They have the meanings right on the cards. Super cute. They were very inexpensive. I think they were like seven or eight bucks on Amazon. So anyway, and I have a new deck coming. I'm so freaking excited. Um, new romance cards. I've been watching people use these for years. So <laughs> I'm excited to get the deck myself and I'm getting another Oracle card deck. So I will do a uh, three card, pick a card with you guys. I have to say, I just did this video and it didn't record. So um, I do have the cards picked out already because I did the reading. I was kind of a little ivory. But, but. but anywho, let's see. So let's bring up the whiteboard real quick. 
and we'll just have a brief talk. It's not the, the greatest thing. One of my girls asked me to draw, no, she didn't ask me to draw anything, I drew it. <laughs> she, she asked about uh, chakras. Let's do some more work on chakras. So I'm gonna start from the beginning. I am not an expert on chakras. I used to work with them for myself, okay? Just so you know, there's people out there that's, that are experts, I'm not. I know quite a bit, but I'm not an expert. You'll find my drawing quite humorous. Again, my business is Full Circle Healing. Okay, you see right here. Make this a little bit bigger. All right. So here you can see me in my sideways picture. picture. You can kind of just look like this. I don't know why it went sideways. I'm sorry about that. And then here <clears throat> next to it is the dry flowers. And here I'm cutting the flowers off the stems into the mason jar. Here I made, uh, and that was after they dried here, I made the pot of tea, like I said, it was just, oh my God, so delicious. And I'm pouring my cup and there's the cup. It was just so good. The golden yellow it was, All right? And um, I just bought this book here. No, oh, my end must have cut off, but uh, this book here is called Chakra Healing, A Beginner's Guide to Self-Healing Techniques that Balance the Chakras by Margarita, let's see if I can pronounce her last name. Hold on. Margarita Al Alcantara, just under 10 bucks on Amazon to paperback. I think it was like a hundred and something pages. Short read, good read. Tells you everything you need to know about chakras. I'm pretty sure that's the book I used to have. Not sure. Over here are all my notebooks, not all of them, but a, a good majority of my notebooks that I sell on Amazon and the prices, the reasonably priced guys. I do reading lists, I do notes, I got everything, wedding guest lists, kids books. I know, that's a little pot smoker. <laughs> um, journals and dream journals. Uh, this is one of my favorites right here is um, Wake and Bake Morning Manifestation Journal. Wake and Bake every morning. If you're, if you're like me, I use, uh, I use herbage for pain and IBS and GERD and all kinds of other things. It's crazy. Lots of fun books. You gotta go look under Sarah C and Amazon. If you look on my Facebook page, Full Circle Healing, I have all of them posted with the links to Amazon, just click on it. Very inexpensively priced. All right. So again, to recap on this week, Sarah sees full circle, yoga, breathing and meditation, wand, chakra. If that awesome new book, you guys got to get it. I do have some video suggestions, like I said. Um, the yoga videos are wonderful. I will put those links up, plus the chakra videos I will discuss with you after. Our new, my new weekly talk show, which you're here with me now. I hope you continue to watch me every week. Going public, I'm so excited about that. We're gonna be doing some five minute meditations every week, I'm gonna start with that, um, and of course, a three card picket weekly oracle, okay? And I will do that with you in a bit. Uh, here, the chakras are the seven centers of spiritual power in your body, okay? I just have to make this smaller. If you guys can see this, okay. 
And hold on. I'm going to copy this link into a chat box here so you guys can see it. So you guys can um, click on this link. I'm going to try and put this also in the video so you can open that up. Oops, don't want to do that. <clears throat> okay. So where did chakras originate? They originated in India, okay? Chakras is, are of the Hindu culture. I know I spelled culture wrong. Chakras, well, they each correspond with a different organ of your body, which is pretty cool. Um, it is of uh, the emotional, physical, psychological, and spirit states of consciousness which is known as the state of mind. Uh, when you're working with your chakras, you can also use mandra, which are the hand positions that help open each chakra while you're working through from your root chakra to your crown. So let's start with the root chakra, okay? So the root chakra is known for trust, and it's ironic. Now look at my little dude here. It's neither a male or a female. Just want you to know, non-binary, nothing, no parts or anything. Hope you love my drawing. <laughs> trust, and I find that just ironic for where it's placed. Um, but it's it's located at the base of the spine. Uh, when that chakra is open, you would generally feel stability. You feel at ease, grounded, okay? If it's blocked, you might feel fear and anxiety. Um, pardon me, the root chakra is color red. And if you wanna incorporate yoga, you would use the tree pose, okay? The second chakra is located, uh, is the sacral chakra, chakra, and it's located between the pelvis, and the navel, okay? That is known as the creativity and the sexual chakra, okay? Or sexuality, the color is orange. And if you're gonna incorporate yoga, you would do the goddess pose. You guys can look those up. If your chakra is open, you would have feelings of passion, openness. If you were blocked, you'd be having possible OCD or um, feelings of guilt, low self-esteem. Okay, our next chakra is the solar plexus, the third chakra known for wisdom and power. Okay, the color is yellow. And if you were going to incorporate yoga into your chakra work, it would be the warrior pose. <coughs> Pardon. <coughs> and that is located between your navel and your rib cage right here. If your solar plexus is open, you'd feel confidence and drive. Self image would be strong. Okay. If, uh, that chakra would be closed, your solar plexus, you would have a low self-esteem, you'd feel shame and other things, okay? So uh, moving up to your fourth chakra is your heart chakra, which is located in the center of your chest, okay? And that is responsible for love and healing, okay? It's a color green, and you would do a camel pose if you're incorporating yoga. If, oh, and it's also responsible for communication. 
Oh, I'm sorry. No, love and healing. You said because we're we're at the heart chakra. So looking at the center of your chest, you would feel love and peace, high vibra high vibrations. Uh, if your heart chakra is open, okay. If your heart chakra is blocked, you have feelings of grief, hatred. Maybe you'd have some trust issues. Those are some of the things that you could touch upon there. Okay. So your fifth chakra is your throat chakra. It's in the center of your neck. The color is blue. And if you're going to incorporate yoga, it would be a shoulder pose. Okay. Um, it is the communication chakra. Makes sense. If it's open, you would be speaking the truth. You'd have good listening skills. Those are some of the great things, okay? If, uh, if your communication, your throat chakra was blocked, you'd be dealing with secrets. You'd be secretive. Maybe you'd be dealing with dishonesty or you're dishonest. You know, lack of, uh, lack of focus. You're having trouble focusing. Okay, those are some of the things there. All right, the sixth chakra is your third eye chakra. Everybody's familiar with that. And that is the chakra of awareness, okay? It's located between your eyebrows. Color is indigo, okay? Yoga pose for that would be the downward dog, all right? Um, if your third eye chakra is open, you know you're going to have intuition, clear vision. You're going to see beyond the physical. You might be psychic, you might be a medium like myself, things like that. If your chakra is closed or blocked, you're going to have poor judgment, lack of foresight, only see, you know, physical things. You're not going to be able to see visions and stuff like that. Okay. And last but not least, your seventh chakra is your crown chakra. You find that on the top of your head. And that is the chakra of spirituality. The color is violet. And if you want to stand on your head, that's your yoga pose. So it is a chakra of uh, wisdom, alignment. You might feel love as one, as a unity, love of the universe. Like you are one, you are one with the universe. Um, you're part of something bigger, okay? Um, the openness is it, just, uh, just openness. Um, if you are... If your chakra is blocked, then you might have anxiety, um, disconnection. Um, learning difficulties, I have to look at my notes. Maybe learning difficulties, okay? There's more in-depth explanations and you can find that in the video, Seven Chakras, Meanings and Functions, which I'll post the link to that. Uh, that is an in-depth about your body organs and everything. It's amazing. Okay, so I'll put that up there. I think that was like an 11 or 12 minute video. I try to keep them pretty short. Also, um, dealing with this awesome drawing I made right here <laughs> is uh, the Seven Chakras, Beginner's Guide, Balance and Law of Attraction by Renee Amberg, okay? <clears throat> the second video I just mentioned will delve more on this drawing that I made and the seven centers of spiritual power in your body. She also discussed um, more open and closed scenarios and what to do if you find yourself with closed chakras and where to place yourself to better open them up. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. All right, so I think I covered everything there. I'm going to read the June 6th entry out of the Witch's Year. I said six, it's the fifth. Six, five. Pins. What do you guys know about pins? 
like pins, P-I-N-S. I know this virtual screen here isn't, it's not behaving. Pins have long been created with magical abilities. Most of us are familiar with the saying, see a pin, pick it up. And all day long, you'll have good luck. Honestly, I thought that was a penny. I don't know, I watch too many Grease movies, I guess. But when it's concerning witches, it actually is in P-I-N. So, however, the pin must point away, away from you. For to pick it up, when it is towards you or by the point, will bring disappointment. So if it's facing you, if the point is facing you and you try to pick it up, don't do it because it'll only give you disappointment. So remember that. You want the little ball part of the pin, I'm assuming the straight pin, to be <clears throat> facing you and the needle part to be facing out. Okay? All righty. And hold on, there's more. It was also thought unlucky to lend a pin and the lender would turn their back so as not to see it being taken. Unmarried women would remove all the pins from the bride's costume to enhance their chances of marrying within the year. The bride was given a pin immediately after her wedding so that she would have control in the house. Pins were closely associated with witches and accepting a pin from a witch was thought to place you in her power. Of course, they were also struck into images as a curse. People make voodoo dolls, stuff like that and they stick pins in them. So yes, traditionally, uh, hoodoo, voodoo, and stuff like that, witchcraft pins are still very wild, widely used in witchcraft and um, still have a bit of uh, folklore attached to it. Magically, pins are placed in a cradle to signify the point at which magic is sent forth. We use them in ton specific spells to pin the magic to a date. They are and have always been cast into wells as an offering and placed under doorsteps or in door frames to protect the house. Today we see pins as being of little value, but this was not in the case of the past. The humble pin held things together, clothes, wrapping, and even small wood items. Hence, it had much, much value and pins were always kept safely. Moreover, the term pin could mean anything from the object we recognize to fairly sturdy tacks, fine nails, or even brooch. And a word of advice, practice the things you enjoy, even if you're not very good at them. Like yoga. Even if we're not very good at yoga, still do it. You'll get better. You know, I know I'm not going to get myself off the floor and, um, you know, be bending in half and stuff like, oh no, I'm going to get up so slow. But at some point, as I start to loosen up, it will get better. So I have to turn on a light real quick. Bear with me. Hey, I shed some light on the situation. All right. So oh and we were talking about uh white clover i got this at ollie's any of you have an ollie's or if you guys remember i don't know if any of you remember from new england we had building 19 i don't know if they're still standing some of them might be but um i know in massachusetts i think they took them all down i'm not sure but complete language of flowers. Good book. And here they talk about folklore and um, white clover. So check this out. Okay. Symbolic meanings. I promise lightheartedness. Promise. Think of me. Possible powers. Good luck. Happy marriage with good luck. Joyfulness. Marital longevity with happiness and good fortune. Prosperity. Protection. Virility. Folklore facts on white clover. If love has broken your heart, white clover open, <clears throat> wear white clover over your heart 
on a piece of blue silk to help you get through it. Otherwise, always wear it over the right breast. The legend is that in the fifth century, St. Patrick used white clover to teach about the Christian belief in the Holy Trinity. Now, if you're familiar with the Holy Trinity, it's great. It's continuous. Um, love, light, and protection, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Um, there's a bunch of other meanings too. I had the Trinity um, circles on my bustle. It's what kept my bustle up, my train. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. From the Middle Ages onward, white clover has been considered the symbol of the Trinity. The Trinity, if I could even talk. Brides and grooms should enter into marriage with clover tucked into each shoe. To them, white clover and any other three-leaf clover is symbolized is symbolic of earth, sea, and sky, which is why spells are re repeated three times. Yeah. Scatter white clover around an area of magical negativity to break a hex. If you have a hex upon you, wear white clover to break it. So those of you, I think somebody was asking me not too long ago, I think I have a hex on me. I think somebody put it on, you know? So if you feel like somebody's got some shit on you, wear some white clover, you can sage yourself, um, all kinds of stuff. Lavender, patchouli, I love patchouli. I really don't care if other people don't like it, but don't bathe in it because it is a little much. I love it, but it can be a little much. Don't bathe in it. Um, chili is great for protection. So obviously it's white clover. You want to be extra protected? Drink the tea. <laughs> Just saying. All right. This is going to be a short show today. So. We do a three card pick it. Pardon me, I need a drink. I'm thirsty. Okay. I feel pretty good about that drawing of mine. Uh, I am also going to post a weekly. No, not weekly. What am I saying? I'm going to post a, a monthly for a June reading. I'm going to be heading up to New England, as I said, <clears throat> in New Jersey. At some point, I'll be back down in Florida, sail my peeps down there. Maybe uh, October, I'll be down there. So let's see. One, two. Okay, one, two, all right, so if you picked card number one, I would, well, wait, we'll stop, concentrate. Okay, one, two, take some deep breaths with me. In through your mouth, nice and slow. Can I see that? In through your nose, nice and slow, out through your mouth. Again. Okay, I feel better now. Sometimes all it takes is a minute, 30 seconds, some deep, slow breathing to get your serotonin levels going up. 
exactly they need to be. Okay. I'll touch more on that. <clears throat> All right, if you pick card number one, manage to be glad. She's so cute. I don't know if you can see her all right. Manage to be glad. Okay, she's got a little skunk. She's not very happy. Manage to be glad. Create your own happiness regardless of the condition. What happened? Something stinks and you don't like it. So it seems you're gonna to have to make the best out of whatever just happened or whatever's gonna happen this week, okay? That's what I'm feeling right there. Something happened, you don't like it. It sucks, it stinks, there's your skunk. You have to make the best out of it. Pick card number two, never jam today. Uh, promises that never come to be. Happy words, no, oh, empty words, not happy words, empty words. Not living in the now. Are you living in the past? Somebody promised you a bunch of stuff and uh, didn't happen. I mean, we've all done it. We've all done it. <clears throat> empty words. Don't look at people like that. She's so cute. Okay. So promises that never came to be, empty words, not living in the now. So it sounds like you're stuck. It sounds like you're 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 stuck on what somebody promised you. You're, you're, you're stuck in your head or oh, what this person said, didn't do. Oh my God. What, you know, ugh. you can't fret over this. You can't. You pick card number three, a, mer uh, a moment's regret. Nostalgia, idealizing the past. Fearing you made a mistake. Right there, my card's so wide. Hmm. Managed to be glad, never jammed today, moments regret. Nostalgia, idealizing the past, fearing you made a mistake. So you're reminiscing on a time before you put yourself into a situation that now you're regretting because somebody's an asshole and promised you a bunch of stuff that's not happening right now. So this week that's coming for you, what's happening is that your situation sucks whatever you've gotten into, <clears throat> somebody promised you a lot of stuff. Promised you the world. It could be personal. It could be a job. It could, you know, be a relationship. It could be a friend, roommate, who knows. But I think somebody promised you a lot of stuff. Your situation sucks right now. You're regretting it. You're thinking about the past. You could have stayed doing whatever or been whatever, wherever. And why did you do this? It sucks. So you're gonna have to make the best of it, pretty much. This is what you're gonna have to do. But you gotta live in the now. Wait, this one, sorry, I'm looking backwards. You gotta live in the now, okay? You're not living in the present. You're not living in the now. You gotta live in the now. You gotta figure it out and stop beating yourself up, okay, about it. Okay, so you made a mistake, what do you do? Make the best out of your situation, figure out a solution, make the best of your time, 
I did pull, <clears throat> I did pull a couple of extra cards, like I said in the beginning. <laughs> I did this whole video and I didn't record. It's a learning process. So I pulled two more cards because I was like, who me? So those two cards are growing up, wanting to grow and experience rejection of and perpetual youth, and use your time well, make every moment count. So this makes total sense, okay? Make the best use of your time right now. So you're, you're don't sit and wallow in your shit. Okay, don't sit and wallow in your shit. Please don't do that. All right. Um, grow from this experience. You know you want to grow from this experience. Whatever it is, you want to grow from this experience. Okay. Don't sit and let fester and don't sit there on your laurels. Like, don't sit there and die on it. Use your time, figure out what you need to do, make the best of your situation, whatever it is, figure it out. Rejection sucks. Whether this is a job, somebody put you down, you're just in a shitty situation, whatever your situation is, you're in a shitty situation this week. And by the way, this may not resonate with everyone. So don't sit here and say, geez, well, let's shit. No, because um, it'll resonate actually with a lot of people, um, but not everyone. So these cards might not be for you. It's a collective. Okay. Heed my warning, people. Heed my warning. Okay. Take your time. Get your head out of the past. Stop kicking yourself in the ass by saying, hmm, I should have. I should have done this. Oh, she or or that or the job or this. Whatever. Grow up. You're an adult. Act like one. Okay. Use your time wisely. Make good decisions. Grow from your experiences. Move the fuck on. It's pretty simple. You're gonna be fine. That's just this week. This is just insight. You could change it all. Don't wallow in your shit because it's not going to take you anywhere. It's not going to. It's not going to help you do anything. You know this, okay? You want a private reading from me? Let me know. I'm not going to be inundated with private readings, so. though. I don't know if that was this video or the last one, but. I don't charge hundreds of dollars for, for, for readings. I do appreciate a donation or a tip or something. I will put my PayPal or my uh, cash app up as a link so you guys can pay me that way. Um, I get my pleasure by helping you all. I really do. But it's my time and I could be doing other things. So help a sister out, will you? Um, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about everything that's going to come, and it's going to be pretty big. For now, it is what it is. I hope you enjoy it. I thank you for joining me. My name is Sarah C. I'm with Full Circle Healing Tarot and Teas. And Teas and Tarot? No, I don't know that goes. This is Sarah C's Full Circle. Thank you for joining me. You all have an awesome week, and I will see you on my YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget. Love and light. Bye. <laughs>